Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Natasha Jonas. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. We've both got our respective children in bed. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully asleep, um, so we can we can have a chat. Um, and you're going to be doing pundit duty for Sky Sports, I believe, on Saturday night. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I've got confirmation um, from Sky uh, this week, so yeah, I'll be on as part of the team. How excited are you about doing that? I've, I'm not. I may have missed it if you've done it before. I don't want to say it's your debut if it's not, but do, is it something you enjoy? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. The first, the first couple, I have done it before. The first couple of times you do it, you like you just say say anything just to get the camera out your face. <laughs> uh, but now that like, you know, I've done it a couple of times. I'm a bit more relaxed. And to be fair, it's only talking about what you know best, which is boxing. So. You know, you just gotta you just gotta listen to the questions and, and answer them as best as you can. Would it be a bit of a pang of regret in the sense that you're not actually the one in the ring? You're going to be talking about the uh, Terry Harper fight, of course, and she's fighting Tanders with, rather than yourself in the rematch that you you've hoped for. A little bit, it's a little bit bittersweet. It, obviously, I'd love to be um, fighting, um, but circumstances just haven't let that. So I can't let that bug me down. And I'm I'm going to be involved in some. Some some sense of the word. So um, yeah, just sit back and enjoy enjoy you know the, the rest of the moment for the girls, for the ladies, sorry, and um, yeah, enjoy the night. It's nice to be involved and not being punched in the face. <laughs> A female triple header on Sky Sports would have been pretty much unthinkable ten years ago, even even as recently as that. How proud are you that we've got to this stage, and and how much do you feel personally invested in it? Not just for what happened at Fight Camp, which got so many people talking more about women's boxing, but your entire amateur career and representing GB as well. I think I say this a lot, but you know, we always knew how good women's boxing was. We just needed the world to see it, um, and I think you know, 2012 opened a lot of people's eyes to that, um, to the standards, um, and you know, the progression of athletes now is that they have got the choice of whether they want to stay amateur or want to, whether they want to go pro and, and go with a top promoter like Matroom, like whoever. Um, and the, the 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 options and the opportunities are there now. So it's only going to get better as more Olympic cycles go through and we get these elite amateurs coming through. It's crazy because you went into the Terry Harper fight. We talked about this before. A lot of people were writing you off, saying you were too old, saying that you'd lost previously that, that one fight. And, and that you didn't have a great chance. You've come out of it. And now I, was, I saw on the conference call, while I was part of it yesterday, Katie Taylor was pretty much calling you out. It's, it's a real sea change. Oh, right. I didn't. I, I haven't seen that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, have to have a, I'll have to have a look. So, you need to get on seconds um, out. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you know, I've always said I am always here. Yeah. Um, anybody between, you know, super, super fair there to probably light welter uh, uh, you know I can, I can do so you know I'm struggling for opponents if you are too I'm always here and especially if you've got you've got the belt that I want anyone with a belt within within them divisions is, is a target for me and you know it's nice to to you know to have someone like Katie call you out it, it just proves the, the level that I'm at and to be fair it was just one slip up in this game and you kind of like tossed aside and tossed in the bin but it was just a bad night. I've never made these excuses. I've never, you know, it was just one of them things. Um, I've always knew how good I was, how good I can be, how much I've improved under Joe. So, you know, just keeping that progression on and just keeping, we, we was riding the crest of a wave after the Harper and, you know, we, we wanted the rematch immediately because, you know, my confidence was up and, 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 and maybe hers was, you know, down a little bit and whatever, whatever that you know that was one of the reasons we wanted it, but it, it isn't to be. And you know when when it does come round eventually, if it does come round, then um, what a fight it'll be again because I'm expecting her to, to bring her best. We talked about the punditry uh, being bittersweet. Is the fight itself, the first half of fight, now bittersweet because you felt you'd done enough to win, you didn't get the decision. But on the flip side, it must have been quite gratifying to prove to everyone that what you already knew, that, that you were a quality, a world-class operator as a professional. It, it, you know, it makes me 
I can't say it makes me feel better because at the end of the day, I didn't come home, you know, and, and sh- show me family the belt or could share it with my daughter. And it's them, sometimes it's them tangible things that you need when you put in so much hard work. And, you know, me and Joe was in the gym, you know, with, with the lockdown restrictions. It was just us two and we were there. The baby was there and it was a, it was a different camp, but, we both of us were like, right, we could do this. And we both got into this zone that we were like, like anyone can get it. And that's that's the way we went into the fight. And everything we were saying, um, we hundred percent believed. And it was it was just good to be able to now brush the open off thing off and, and prove that I like, you know, I was saying that she, she everything that she not that she, she does is better than me. And I think I proved it on the night. How many times have you watched the fight back? God, it's so bad because it took me up until lockdown to watch the Katie Taylor um, Olympic fight in full. Wow. Okay. I've never ever, I've never ever watched that fight back. Um, and we've done it with uh, Joe Gallagher's Academy. Um, the open off one, I still, ne- I've never watched back. Even me wins, I, I, I don't really ever watch back. But I did. I've watched the half one a few times, <laughs> and you know, round eight, I could, I could kick myself, but. Um yeah, it was it's it's good to it was good to see, you know, there's things I look back at that I'm so frustrated at that I didn't do. And you know, I've I've heard a couple of other pundits say that like maybe in the rematch that I won't get better, but Terry will, and they'll be sadly mistaken again. What's the closest you've scored it in all the times you've watched it back? Me by a round. Um, but generally I think me by two. Um, I thought on the night it was it was me by one, and then when I've watched it back, I think it's me by two. So did it feel pretty close? I mean, because a lot of people have said it's a robbery, and then other people said, well, it's a close fight, could have gone either way. Trying to be as objective as you can, where do you sit on that? Um, you know, a, a robbery is such a such a strong word. Um, I just think people think, you know. The majority of the people think I won, so then they can't see how people thought Terry won, sure. or the judges thought Terry won. So to them, that's like, well, she clearly won by at least a round or two. So how have you got it that somebody else has won? And I think, and I think that's where people are saying robbery. I personally, myself, I, I think robbery is a strong word, um, but I, I, yeah, I do think I won, and I, yeah. And um, we spoke to Joe. Or I spoke to Joe last week or the week before. But I want to hear from you, from your point of view, why is the rematch not happening next? Why is it Tanders in the opposite corner instead of you this time? From what I understand, um, it was requested um, before we had put the request in um, or we had um, said about an unfair result or something to the WBC board. And so before we'd got like a complaint kind of thing in, they put or the request had been accepted already from them. Um, so that's my understanding. Um, there was a couple of uh, match room wanted to do like a three fight deal. We couldn't agree on one of the fights. And in turn, that meant that none of the three fights happened. Um, so that had something to do with it as well. Um, but that's, that's basically it. With the interview Joe did, not the one with me, the one previous to that, that caused a bit of consternation, I think, and, and back and forth between Sky and stuff. Were you surprised to get the call from Sky to be a part of the show at the weekend? No, I think, you know, I, 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 yeah, I just think, you know, no, not really. <laughs> I just think that, like, they think it's, you know, it, it'd be... You know, good to keep me in the 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 loop, I suppose, in case that fight does come come about. You want to keep me, you know, it, it's good that they're keeping me relevant. It's good that they're keeping me busy. It's, you know, I'm getting paid for the night. So even though I'm not getting paid boxing, I'm getting paid for the, the punditry work. So they are, they are helping me out in that sense. Um, and I, I think they just think it's possibly it's fair to do that. So. And while you're going to be a professional on-screen personality, so you have to be impartial on the night, 
deep down, are you hoping Harper comes through because you want that rematch? I mean, you may get a shot at Tanders if she wins, but it'd mean more, surely, to get the rematch and, and win it that way. Yeah, to be honest, it doesn't doesn't really matter to me who wins. I mean, it's great for the British public if, if Terry does win. Um, and, you know, we do get the rematch. That that would be great for, for me and everybody else who watched the fight camp and, and supported us. But for, for me personally, it's whoever's got the belt, that's who I want. So if you haven't got the belt, I wouldn't really be interested. And who do you think will come through in the fight? Just tell us a bit about how you think the fight will play out style-wise. So I've been speaking to both girls, to be honest. Um, and, you know, I think... Tanders has boxed Rachel Ball, who I also spoke to. Um, and it was a close fight between her and Rachel. Um, I know Terry, one of the things I think Terry realised af- after our fight was that, you know, she needed to be a little bit stronger. And there's there's a difference between being a, a girl and a woman. And it, you know, I don't think, no disrespect to Terry, I don't think she had that woman's strength. So when we was in the clinches and when we were wrestling, she didn't know how to do that. So Fantas has got that as an advantage. You know, she's a woman, she's got that woman's strength. But Terry, in the other hand, has been working on that because she realised, and obviously, you know, she's taken herself, she's the champion. She realised she has to step her game up because now she's the target for everybody. Sure. Um, and, um, you know, I think Fandas' best best thing would be to draw Terry into their fight, but I know uh, Terry doesn't doesn't want to be drawn into her fight, so she's going to stick to what she does best and, and and try and keep it long. So it it'll be interesting to see, you know, who can drag who into whose fight, and you know whether you know. I think could Fandas be banking on that Terry has lost a bit of confidence. Uh, Teddy's obviously saying no. I'm more determined than ever to prove to everyone after the last last outing. So it's a battle of you know who comes who comes out first. I'm sorry, who comes out best? It's interesting because it could be that the experience that she's had against you proves the key to to getting through this one. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, like I said, b- because of because of our fight, she's. You know, realise that she ha- she does have to take you know the the status of world champion a bit more serious, and she does have to develop in you know other areas. And and Rachel Ball's been the same. To be fair, I was speaking to Rachel earlier, and she she's been taking everything really serious. You know, she's got a, a new strength and conditioning coach because she was like, if I want to step up, I have to be doing something different. If I want to get better, I have to develop myself, and that's that's what you need to do to get to these world championships levels. So what's the plan for you now? As you said, you were talking to Matchroom about a three-fight deal. You didn't come to terms between the two parties. Do you just wait around for a fight date now? Is Joe looking to get you out on one of the smaller shows? What What's the plan? Um, there is other options. Obviously, Michaela Meyer um, winning her belt um, a couple of weekends ago. That's She's she's an option with top rank. Um, yeah, and I, I've seen just literally... 10 minutes before we came onto this interview about um, Choi has put something up on her social media saying, you know, she's um, coming to the UK to be fighting. So no one actually knows who that is, but I can see my name is being thrown in the half of that. Um, so, yeah, as I say, it's all it's all very interesting. You know, our division at the minute is on fire. There's a lot of different champions. Matchroom, I've got access to a lot of them. So it does make sense to... Um, stay in the loop with Matchroom and, and, and um, see if we can negotiate some terms. But, you know, they have to negotiate and not just offer one thing <laughs> and then say no to everything else. And Katie Taylor now, apparently, as well. Is oh, yeah, I don't know, Katie. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch that. So, um, yeah, but like I say, I, I'm, I, ha- I think I've proved the level I'm at and, you know, I'm not going to be the easy draw as people once thought that I was. Um, so um, it would be a blessing and a curse. You can thank um, John Denham of Boxing News for the Katie Taylor one. He brought it up to her. And she seemed very happy about the idea, to be fair. She, she seemed very excited by the prospect of uh, 
rematches pros. Oh, and she's gone. <laughs> you back? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what when you say Katie Taylor's name and she's not here, the screen just explodes. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, <laughs> how she has. Like Beetlejuice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, I was saying you could thank John Denham from Boxing News because he brought up the idea to Katie Taylor and she seemed very excited about the prospect of a pro rematch between you guys. Yeah, I think, you know, again, it was one of them nights in the Olympics that was arguably one of the best fights of the Olympics. Uh, we obviously come out with the record of the loudest crowd participation noise and um, anyone who was there, anyone who's seen it, it was something that was enjoyable for all to watch. This time it would be over four rounds, but over 10. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, this is, it's always kind of been the build-up kind of thing anyway since since the day I said I was going to go pro. It was always going to be when's, the, when's that re That was always like the build-up fight that was going to, you know, lead up. So, yeah, I'm back in the mix and I'm happy to be there. And, if, you know, after Gutierrez... If she wants to uh, fight, I am ready and willing. Before I let you go, I just want to ask you quickly about Joe, because he's got a reputation for being all for his fighters. He's very passionate. He's stuck his head above the parapet. In this case, for you, he's done it for other fighters, of course, in the past. And just... Oh. And again. <laughs> Another Beetlejuice. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, Joe this time. Joe, Joe's Candyman. Joe's, Joe's Candyman. Listening in. Yeah, I said his name five <laughs> times in the mirror. Um, yeah, j just a word about Joe and, and what he's done for you because he, he is sticking his head above the parapet and, and really going to battle for you, which I think is a great thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I said it on, a, on, on another interview, um, but like, he's all for us. This is, you know, obviously boxing's a business, but with Joe, it's. We like extended family. He doesn't he, he's trying to do what's best for us to make the best decisions and and you know get the best out of us. Like like I said, through our fight camp, there was nobody else in the gym. It was me and Joe and the baby, and you know some of them sessions were tough, and he was getting up and staying late, and you know we was encouraging each other to read this book, you know, watch that film, and. That's the type of person he is. Joe is an out and out. If you've heard of the Relentless book, he's an out and out cleaner, and he 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 almost wants it as bad as you. And that's the way that the way it needs to be to work and to to prove people wrong. And we had, we had that bit between our teeth, um, and he stuck by me and motivated me and encouraged me even when the times weren't so great after the open off when it, no one sees like the crying in the car on the way home, and you know. It's just Joe, and uh, you know, if yeah, I came into the game with him, I will, I will leave with him. You know, that's just that, that's the respect I have for him. That's the, you know, I think I think when I was making the decision to go pro, he was, you know, top three uh, coaches that I thought of instantly. Um, he's a brilliant coach, a brilliant person, um. And yeah, we, we, we work, but we have a laugh as well, doing it. I hate to end on a, a less um, warm note, but who were the other two? Um, Rob McCracken. Um, and... Um, I can't think of his name now. The Welsh guy. Uh, Welsh. Gary Lockett? No. Who else? No. Oh my god, I can't wait. Yeah, girl comes to me. <laughs> I'm gonna but yeah, I'm gonna well, probably well someone really well known, but <laughs> there's Gary Lockett, there's Tony Borg, Gavin Reese. I think who else is in Wales that I'm, miss I'm missing out? I might be I might be lying by yeah, saying the most actually. No, I think he trained some of the Welsh kids though. Is it Tony? It's not Tony Sims. Uh, yeah, I think it might have been Tony Sims, actually. But, yeah. yeah. Well, they obviously were third on the list. If you can't yeah, they were third, yeah. <laughs> right. All right, well, it's been great to speak to you. Um, I hope it all goes well on um, Saturday night. I mean, I'll be watching, so I'll know how well it goes. Oh, I see me mumbling and saying... Um... No pressure, yeah. No, I'm sure it'll be great. Oh.
on the plus it's side, on the plus I need to start paying me be, uh, sorting the technology out on the Saturday. Oh, I, I need to start paying me Virgin, but don't I? This is Virgin for you. Put 50p in the meter. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. I hope we get to sum up before you go again, but I really appreciate <laughs> it. And um, best of luck Saturday night. I look forward to watching you in action. Cheers. Thank you. And thank you for the support. No, anytime. Take care. Nice to speak to you. See you soon. Bye. Bye.